The end of the A1 Tour is upon us as we approach here at Kansas Speedway for our seventh time. We've been here every single year and we're back here once again under the lights. But this time it ends a tour as we're about to head into Europe after this. And this is the race that means a lot. After today, owner's points will start to take into effect. The trading period will open and there's definitely a lot of rumors going around about trades and coming. We'll have to see how that works out depending on how this race goes for some people. But on pole position today, Philip Scott, the legend himself, gets his sixth career pole position and the first of the season for Maverick Wolf. And after coming out of Nashville, winning that race last week, now they come in here today on pole position. They did have a front row lockout, but Roman Rahal had to go to the rear for an incident back in practice. So it's still a Honda front row lockout though. Skyla Johnson returns to the grid today after being absent for Nashville and comes back swinging, starting P2. Uh, was originally P3, but will be alongside Phillips Scott on the front row. Honda looking very strong here today. On row two, Connor Hurley gets his second career uh, podium start, uh, but it's the first one he's ever earned himself. It's looking very good for the driver of the 63 car, but he's alone today representing Fallout Racing, so we'll have to see what Connor Hurley could do in that 63. Alongside Daniel Bouchard, whose ride was in danger, coming into only last week, but he he got a beautiful performance last week in Nashville, and now he's starting on P4 here today in Kansas. It's looking very good for Bouchard going as we're heading into Europe very soon. On row three, Ryan Griffin has had a good start to the season as well, and he's looking to keep that up. Shock Allison Racing, they got off to a really rough start, but they've been lately right on it, and if they can keep up this momentum, they're looking really good going into Europe. And that's alongside Hans Winhelm, who got through the track that he ended up getting suspended for last year. Nashville, now he's got a chance to keep a good championship run going. He's in the top 20 in points. In a Monarch, we'll see what he could do in that 58 car as time goes on. On row four, William Brock, one of two 10-time winners in the field. And Brock has gotten off to a pretty good start this season, uh, but he's, he's really got to pick it up if he wants to catch up to the likes of Sean Angel and William Duncan, and obviously the reigning champion, Paul Jackson. Alongside Dan Bartlett, who also returns to the grid this week, who also did good in qualifying. Uh, Bartlett was looking pretty good in practice, as now he's here today in qualifying. We'll see what Bartlett can do back in the car after a one-week absence. And on row five, it's Aiden Shepard uh, for Roush Racing Enterprises. Roush Racing Enterprises has gotten two of the pole positions this year. Not this time. It's a Honda front row lockout. But the team is looking so fast this year. But Shepard, the highest Roush Racing Enterprises car in ninth. I believe this is the lowest Roush Racing Enterprises has qualified this year. And that's alongside Eric Monaco, uh, the driver of the 87 Ray Brig Maverick Wolf Machine. His teammate up in pole position, one of his teammates near the rear, and the other one in mid-pack. The team's all spread out, so we'll have to see what they can do separately trying to climb through the field. Looking back at some of the other threats, there's your points leader, Sean Angel. Only one row back from Eric Monaco, but he's starting on the outside, which struggles around here. Unless you can get a good jump early on that outside and find your way low, you're looking to be in trouble, and that applies as well for William Duncan who's third in points. But it's a good thing for Paul Jackson. He's starting on the inside line here today. This could be Jackson's chance to snatch the points lead away from Sean Angel. The Kansas King, the guy who's known for winning around here, that is Alexander Rowe. Uh, Rowe has won three times around this track, and we've only been here six times. So if he wins here today, that means he, if, <laughs> that would mean that he would win more times than he's lost. And that's an incredible stat to think about. Uh, but three people take up the rear today. Roman Rahal, Johan Arndt, and Tyler Faber. Uh, Rahal and Arndt got into the same incident actually back in practice. And Tyler Faber had his engine go up in smoke at the beginning of practice and just couldn't get it fixed. It's unfortunate for them, but they got a lot of work to do. But cars are lined up and ready to go. And your command is incoming as we're getting ready to go green in Kansas. Out of turns three and four, 
And for the first time this season for Maverick Wolf Racing, Philip Scott will lead it down to the green flag here at Kansas Speedway for the seventh time in Sunoco Elite Series history. Green flag is in the air. And it's Philip Scott leading the first lap around Kansas. In 2018, Hurley looked like he wanted to say something about it, but it's Griffin instead who will challenge down the inside of the fallout car and put Honda into a 1-2. I see Shepard also coming up through the pack, getting through Hurley now. But it's still Philip Scott out front and leading this race. Griffin closing in on the back of the 80 car. Very quickly is now, he's right on the bumper. He's got to make a challenge before Shepard gets up to him and is able to challenge him. And he will. Here comes Ryan Griffin. Slight mistake. Oh, that was a mistake out of the six car. That's going to allow Phillip to keep leading. We're on to lap four. It's Philip Scott now, Aiden Shepard, and Cody Lamas down the inside. There is your point leader, Sean Angel. Starting to play a factor in this, but his big championship rival now, Paul Jackson, is not far. We move on to lap five. It's still Philip Scott, but here comes Sean Angel down the inside of Cody Lamas. Griffin looks like he wants to... Oh, Lamas might get screwed here. <laughs> Lamas, you were playing with fire there. He's going to lose all momentum and drop back to his teammate here. There's Roe, the Kansas King. How you saved that car is beyond me, but we are clean on the lap six. Here comes Aiden Shepard, closing in on the back of Philip Scott, as well, as well with Dan Bartlett on the back of Angel. Jackson wanted to challenge Bartlett there. He just didn't have enough space. He's still really close to the back of him. Shepard down the inside, new leader, Aiden Shepard. I see Roe climbing more and more. Who's at the rear though? Ray. Duncan had to fall all the way to the rear before he was able to find his way low. He's got a long ways to go. He's got to hope for a caution. Angel in second. Jackson in third. The championship rivals will do battle. Jackson down the inside of Angel. Bartlett. Also might, oh, it looked like he might have made it three wide there if he had enough space. Here goes Jackson down the inside of Shepard. Bouchard pushed by Hurley. Brock pushing his manufacturer teammate. He has his actual teammate behind him. Chevy's looking good early. Jackson's in the lead. Bouchard. Moves up into second. It's a Honda 1-2. Once more. First it was Scott and Griffin. Now it's Jackson and Bouchard. But Connor Hurley made his way back to the front. He looked quick in practice. Quick in qualifying. And look at him go. He moves into second. Could he be a threat for the win as time goes on? Let's go check on the other championship threat. That is William Duncan. Oh, he's out of the top 30 still, but he is looking very eager to get through Anderson here. Oh, even go as far as bumping him. Trying to move him out of the way. Now he'll go right down the inside of him and Shane Vincent at the same time. Duncan really wants to make up time. Oh, 
It sucks for a few people. Skyla is back here now. Shock's back here. Windhelm dropped like a rock. Paulson and Mulcher, the front row starters from Pensacola. P2 and P3. Bouchard. Close. Griffin and Scott are back at the front. But Mulcher now down the inside. Mulcher's had a pretty good start to the year, but it's had some bad luck littered throughout. A good race here today would really help his championship hopes. He's also been looking like one of the fastest guys so far in the early season. With Shepard. Those two have been the fastest guys. Rash Racing's been the fastest cars, and they're proving it now. Here comes Kieran Mulcher on the inside of Jackson for the lead. Jackson has been taken out of the lead, and Roush Racing Enterprises will lead a lap here in Kansas. Kieran Mulcher is your leader, the Ford Alliance. One, two. Oh, Duncan, where are you? Oh, he's moving. Duncan is on the move. He's in 26th, made the move for 25th, right as he crossed the line. <laughs> is Duncan one of the fastest guys on track? That's what it's looking like. Just hasn't gotten a good lap time, but he's 15th fastest. Fast lap on track is your leader, Kieran Mulcher. Where's the Kansas King? There he is, P8. Actually, P6. He's coming. Mulcher versus Jackson for the lead. Scott, not too far. Johan Arndt started at the rear. What a good hunt it's been for Johan Arndt early in this race. 15 laps, and he goes from the rear of the field up to fourth. He's got his teammate really close behind Jackson back for the lead. The action is intense in the early race. We expected a caution, but it just hasn't come yet. Look at Duncan. He's caught the pack now. He's moving into 21st. He was just moving into 25th. Paulson and Thaber. Thaber? Oh, Thaber was dead last on the start. What a run it's been for the Duncans here! Wow! There's his championship rival! He just went from mid-pack to the rear to back to the front in a matter of 18 laps. He's gonna, he made a slight mistake, hit the curb. He's gonna fall back a little bit. Angel's falling back though right now as we speak, so it's not too bad for him. Down the inside, the, the 2015 champion. And there's the 2017 champion not far ahead. There is two Pontiac teammates. Together is the other one. Back low. And drafting with Eric Monaco. His former teammate. It's so good to have a former teammate up ahead. That's always a great feeling to have because you've got some security. And nope, he checks up. He is not going to challenge Eric. Not when he's on the verge of challenging his biggest championship rival. And now that, oh, now that Eric's challenging Angel, Duncan's gonna take advantage and challenge Eric, pushing Angel to the high line. Big power play out of Duncan, trying to get ahead of Angel, and it's gonna work. Duncan moves into 11th. This race has been intense so far. Jackson has led for a little while though. Bouchard versus Paulson. Rowe, not too far back, and with his teammate close behind, it's looking good for Pontiac. Lamas having a good run, finally having a good run in that 04 car. It's what he needs. Rowe down the inside for third. Oh, Johan got loose. There goes Rowe's cushion. And there is. Alexander Rowe into the podium. Has the fastest lap changed? No, it is still Kieran Malter, your fastest lap. But Duncan continues to move. Oh, he is he is so fast. He's in the top 10 now. He's going for ninth. What a charge it's been out of the four car. Oh, it was too tight. That was, that was a little bit too risky out of Duncan. I don't think he's going to get the move. No. He's getting really eager to make moves. He wants to get up to that 10 car. Pontiac looks so strong, but Honda looks stronger. They're 1-2, but they're catching up to Jackson now. 
He's held this lead for a while. Kudos for him for holding it for this long, but look how close these guys are getting. Paulson wants a piece of it. He's going for second. Johan Art going for fourth, the two-time PLS champion. Never won an SES race before, though. <clears throat> he had his rookie season all the way back in 2013, computed in part of 2014 before disappearing, reappeared back at the start of PLS. That was 2016. Won two titles in a row. And now he's back in elite under the team he got his rookie season under. And now he's trying to fight for a win here in Kansas. Duncan versus his teammate, the Kansas King. But Duncan just looks so much quicker. Someone's got to challenge that 10 car, though. Where is Angel? He's fallen so far. This is the first time this season we've seen Angel struggle for pace. It's finally catching up to him. <clears throat> Lamas, I don't think a, just a barely a top 15 is enough to keep your ride. You need a good run if you want to keep that ride. Here goes Johan Arndt and William Duncan work together. They're getting row into it as well. The Pontiacs are on the move. All together. Oh, but Duncan doesn't even want to waste time on his teammate. But nope, Johan going to keep it from him. It's Jackson, Shepard, and then Pontiac. Pontiac, Pontiac. Oh, Bouchard's trying to hold on him though. Rowe is just too good around here. Oh, they're still on the move. Down the inside of Shepard now. Is Duncan going to pull another double move? <clears throat> like he has multiple times so far this race. No, instead he's going to get a little too much momentum on the outside. Move wide. Can he hold off his teammate now? <clears throat> Travis Ultra Auto Sport holds a 3-4-5. Well, Kansas King, you can't... Oh, it's hard to hold the Kansas King, even when he doesn't have as much pace as you. It's been a great race for Jackson so far after winning Nashville. But here comes Aiden Shepard. Down the inside for the lead. Shepard, the only one at that team that Roush has said who's right, is pretty much locked at this point. He's been a reliable option for that team, for the whole Ford Alliance, for many years. And he continues to prove why. He takes the lead away here in Kansas. And he'll lead a lap. Get Roush Racing Enterprises some extra points. Here comes Duncan. Johan Art moves into second. And once again, the Pontiacs are working together. Oh, but Duncan wasn't able to get there on Jackson. Honda's on the way. There is Pericles. Lamas, come on, man. Do something. We don't want to see you, you lose your ride. Oh, it doesn't look like Shepard's going to hold this. <clears throat> nope. Johan Art. Panasonic Light Series two-time champion. The only two-time champion in an anything ice crow. Drove for Ditech for two years. Ditech is in the field right now. Mylorad Ryback, who was uh, Shane Vincent's replacement in the 29 car. He's been doing pretty okay in this race. Not amazing, but not bad. <clears throat> oh, it's a big battle at the front, though. Here comes Griffin. Oh, he tried to make it three wide. Didn't work. Shepard trying to move through the middle. If he can clear Griffin here, that would be an amazing move out of the 34. And he will. Wow, what a great move out of Shepard. <laughs> he was not giving up without a fight. The battle for the lead is heating up. Multiple people joining in. Mulcher has a day. Oh, did Mulcher just blow up? It's an engine issue. No smoke. But Kieran Mulcher, more bad luck strikes for the 37. Oh, that sucks. That genuinely just sucks for him. Lamas, where are you? 14th, 
13th now. He made up a spot. Okay. Maybe need a little more than that. Come on, just get a trap 10 Lamas. Maybe you'll save your ride with that. Duncan into third. Trying to fight with Jackson for a title. He's got to get up there with him. And he's been so far probably the fastest guy on track. Uh, that is just a uh, mulcher in the pits. Is he out of the race? Ignition failure. He lost power. That's unfortunate. We really expected a caution by now. It looks like that caution may just not happen altogether. It's Jackson, Shepard, and Duncan, your top three. Paulson, Arndt, Griffin, Monaco, Thaber, Rowe, and Hurley round out your top ten. Lamas losing... Oh, no. Lamas, don't start falling. Not now. Here he goes. Down into 15th. Scott, your pole sitter, trying to move up into 14th. It's just a continuation of the struggles he's had this season. And there is the move to push him out of the top 15. God. What a shame. Duncan really pressuring the back of Shepard. But Shepard doing the same to Jackson. Paulson joining into this battle as well. It's four different teams. Four different manufacturers. All fighting for one spot. Paulson now trying to get a win this season. Paulson has had a little bit of an inconsistency drought the last season. He really needs to make up some time in this championship. His ride may be in danger come season's end if he can't get a good run this year. But Shepard back pressuring that 10 car. Jackson got him back right after Shepard got it from him. Can Shepard get back his lead? Jackson really wants to fight for another win. Lamas fighting for a top 15. He's got his teammate right behind him, though. Oh, but Brock's just so much faster. Look at the speed he has. <clears throat> Is he going to fend him off? It looks like Brock let him have it. Oh, mistake out of Brock. Oh, loose there. No big deal. He's fine. This four-car battle at the front continues. It looks like Paulson might be the fastest of the four now. He'll move down the inside of Shepard. It looks like he wants to. <clears throat> Shepard's not going to give him the space yet. Lap 47 of 70. We're coming to 20 to go next time. The pack is spread out, so I don't think we're going to get a caution to save anyone back there. Hurley holding... Well, Hurley's held really well so far in this race. Like, I'm really impressed by the drive of that 63. <clears throat> Very good job out of Connor Hurley. Even if a mechanical issue were to ail him, it would prove... He'd still have proven that he knows what he's doing in this car. Run, Lamas, run! Oh. Now he's got Bouchard closing in. Honda Alliance starting to push in. It just seems that Ray Hall just never got anywhere with his race. Benyako didn't either. I don't think any pits are on the table for this race. Jackson continues to lead. They pushed Paulson back and got into a battle. That gave Jackson a little bit of breathing room. Could Jackson just run away with this? I don't think that's what the four car wants, though. Here comes Duncan. Down the inside of Aiden Shepard. Duncan's going to nab second away, but it's just giving Jackson a little bit more of a gap. Little by little, he's trying to run away. Oh, I think he got a little too eager there, Paulson. <clears throat> I think that outside momentum is going to carry the four car and is going to let Duncan take second. Now, Duncan, you got to reel in the 10 car if you want any chance at this. 
Lap 53 will be the 15 lap to go mark. And Jackson has led most of this race. <clears throat> Ray comes back out on track. He had an engine failure after his tire failure. Damn, Ray is just not having a good day. <laughs> there is Duncan. He's closing that gap little by little down on Jackson. Could either of these two get their second win of the year already? We're at 14 laps to go. And it's Jackson and Duncan. Looking like they're going to start a battle for the lead. And if they do, it could lead Paulson into this as well. I'm unsure if pit stops are a factor. I don't think they are. <clears throat> Mainly because I expected a caution to let them pit, but apparently now it doesn't want to give me a caution. Look around it. Oh, Curtis. It's a bad day for Curtis. Bowers. Wolfstein, another bad day. Looks like he'll be losing owner's points. Shane trying to get owner's points. Angel, way back here. He's losing his points lead. 100%. He's losing a po his points lead to either of these two. I don't know which one it's going to be, though. 12 to go. Duncan, you got to challenge him. He's, oh, he peaked there for a moment. Look through your order real quick. Look at some of the people throughout. It's Jackson, Duncan, Paulson, Johan Arndt, Shepard, Griffin, Monaco, Rowe, Faber, and Dan Bartlett rounding out your top 10. Uh, but there's some underdogs back here. Connor Hurley for Fallout. Part-time Kyle Schock Jr. Nick Pericles having a good performance. Oh, Lamas. Rahul struggling though. Benyako, Connor Monaco, Winhelm, Brock. Oh no! Shane! And that's a mechanical issue for the 28 car. <sighs> Shane Vincent. 10 laps to go for Paul Jackson. And Duncan just isn't there. Shepard moves into fourth. I think I just saw Shane stop on the apron. Hopefully that doesn't bring out a caution, no. It did not bring out a caution. We are still green. Duncan pressuring the back. Engine failure, John Art. Aren't, oh my god, mechanical issues continue to ail people in this race. And John Aren't up and, well, not up and smoke. He's not smoking, but it's an engine failure for him. Seven laps to go. Will we stay green the whole race? Or could we possibly go to overtime? We're just going to have to watch and <clears throat> see what happens. Hurley's on the move in the late race. Wants a few extra spots. Lamas continues to fall. I don't think his ride is safe at all. Paul Jackson has never really been known for winning races. Hell, in his first, what was it? Four, five seasons? his first five years, he only won two races. Although coming close to a championship three times, he only won two races in his career. But if he can win here today, it would be his fourth win in the last season in a quarter, which would really accelerate him in this championship hunt, though not too much with one of his biggest championship rivals lined up behind him. Four laps to go for Paul Jackson. Duncan doesn't have the pace to keep up. So it's down to whether Jackson can hold strong. Could he pull a double? Join the list of people who have pulled two race wins in a row. Being Nick Pericles. What is it? Nick Pericles, William Brock, James Constantin, Max Anderson, John Arndt. Are the five people 
who have ever pulled two race wins in a row. And Jackson trying to join the ranks. This would be his sixth career win. Tying him on the all-times win list for sixth. I don't think Duncan's going to get there. He needs a caution now or it's over. Two laps to go for Paul Jackson. Maverick Wolf trying to go back to victory lane for the second race in a row. Duncan trying to pull up to get his second win of the year. Jackson trying to get his second win of the year. I think Paulson's out of it now. And once they cross the line, next flag ends the race. White flag in the air for Paul Jackson. I don't think Halleck's going to play enough of a factor. I just don't think he will. I saw Duncan made a mistake in one and two, and that's going to be it. He'll become the sixth person ever to pull two race wins in a row. The reigning champion out of three and four. <coughs> Paul Jackson takes the win in Kansas. And it's a double for Paul Jackson, two in a row. He goes from no Speedway wins to two Speedway wins. And we thought that he may have been out of his prime when he got a P11 in points in 2016, but a championship last year and a double this year proves otherwise. Jackson still got it. And Paul Jackson, your winner, Lamas, P18. I think this might be the last lap we see of him in this whole four car. I don't know. <clears throat> it was just disappointing for Cody Lamas. A great race for Paul Jackson. Duncan had a really good race up to that point, but... He just, he used too much of what he had. And it wasn't enough to push after Jackson. And he will not take away his third, fourth career win here today. Instead, Paul Jackson will tie for sixth on the all-time win list. Six career wins for Paul Jackson. He makes more and more of a case of a possible GOAT emerging above Max Anderson in the Sunoco Elite Series. Congratulations, to Paul Jackson and Maverick Wolf goes two in a row here in Kansas. Alex Iterow will not get the coveted 4 out of 7. Not today. He might be able to go for 4 out of 8 next year, though. Congratulations to Paul Jackson taking the win here in Kansas. Let's go look at your full finishing results. So it's Paul Jackson taking the win. Here, his second Speedway win of his career and his second win in a row. Jackson is on a roll. And I think your new points leader. Actually, I'm almost certain he's the new points leader. William Duncan comes home second. And I think he takes second in the points, meaning your top two in points finish 1-2 here today. As we seem to have a fight on our hands between them. <clears throat> Paulson third. Johan Arndt takes away a nice fourth place. Really what he needed. Really what Travis Ultra needed was a good day today. Uh, they had two people near the edge of owner's points. Johan Art and Alexander Rowe both have a good day today. So, good job for Travis Soldier. They're all going to keep their owner's points. Shepard in fifth. Griffin, another amazing day for Ryan Griffin. Griffin is having a great season so far, and it just continues here today. P6. Connor Hurley, after starting P3, proves that it was not a fluke. P7. Very strong out of Connor Hurley. Could he be one of the guys up for a trade <clears throat> in the trading period? We'll have to see. Eric Monaco in eighth. Kyle Schock Jr., his first ever Elite Series start, is a top 10. And that is a great start to his career. Travis Ultra, all four of them in the top 13, was Shock in ninth. And Vince Freeze rounds out the top 10 and might just save himself from getting out of owner's points. Sadly, though, it looks like Shane Vincent. It just, a uh, mechanical issue. And it was a gearbox issue for John Art, which would knock him out of the race as well. It's just unfortunate for those guys. They can't do anything about that when a mechanical issue strikes. 
<clears throat> we really expected a wreck during this race. We didn't get it. Both Trailblazers 29th and 30th. Angel just did not have the day he wanted. And it looks like he'll lose his points lead here today. <clears throat> but congratulations to Paul Jackson, your new points leader in the Sunoco Elite Series, if I'm correct. Could he go for two titles in a row back to back? That would be something. That would definitely, definitely earn him the title of GOAT. Congratulations to Paul Jackson. And we will see you all the start of the European Tour at Owner's Points Lock. After today, top 30 will be locked as we go into Bermuda. Uh, as we're heading to the European Tour. Congratulations once more to Paul Jackson, your new points leader in 2018. And we will see you all as we head to Europe next time. Ciao.